Okay. Now, this next part says list the following numbers in order from le smallest to largest. So I'm going to write them all in the same form. And I'm going to expand them out. So if I have 3.99 times 10 to the fifth, Remember, this is a positive exponent, meaning that I would do 3.99 times 10 to the fifth, which 10 to the fifth would be 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it would be 3.99 times 100,000. And you could do that, and it would give you... 3.99 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 399,000. Or move the decimal. Notice the decimal started there, so move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, fill with zeros. So notice there are three zeros, 993. Nine, Okay, this next one, I'm just going to move the decimal so that I don't have to write all this out and then put it in my calculator. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Fill with zeros. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 27. Put your commas. So that one is 2,700,000. This one is already in that form, so 37,000. And then this one is times 10 to the fifth. So one, two, three, four, five, two zeros, and then eight, three, nine, three. Okay, now we wanna order them from smallest to largest. So I'm going to look for the smallest number. This is 399,000. This is 2 million. This is 37,000. This is 393,000. So this one is first, 37500. That one's first. Then I need to look between these two. Which one is smaller out of the two? Would you rather have 399,000 or would you rather have 393,800? So this one is smaller. So 393,800. I'm going to put a semicolon so you can tell the difference. Okay, so that's number two. Then we have 399,000. And then the last one would be the 2,700,000. But if this was a multiple choice, which the interim is usually multiple choice, you would have to rewrite it or write it in these original forms because that's how the multiple choice is going to be written. So that first one is written 37,500. The next one was the 3.938 times 10 to the fifth. Then we have 3.99 times 10 to the fifth. And then we have 2.7 times 10 to the sixth. Okay. So that is how you would order those from smallest to largest. Now, remember when you're taking a multiple choice test, don't try looking at all of these. They're gonna, there's gonna probably be four choices with four different orders. Don't try looking at those. Do the problem and then go pick which multiple choice matches what you wrote. Okay, this next one, a fighter jet flies at a speed of about 3.73 times 10 squared meters per second. The speed of light is about 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. How many times faster does the speed of light travel than the, flighter, the fighter jet? I'm sorry. Um, so remember, the main thing that you have to figure out here is should you multiply those two numbers together to get a larger number, or should you be dividing? Well, if I had two numbers and I said 4 
and two. And I said, how many times, how many times larger is four than two? You would divide, because the opposite of multiply, which is how many times, so if you're trying to find out how many times, um, then you would have to do the opposite, which is divide. So I'm going to divide. And you want to divide the larger number on top. So if I do 4 divided by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 2 is 2 times larger, or sorry, 4 is 2 times larger than 2. So when we look at this one, do you think a fighter jet flies faster or do you think it, the speed of light is faster? Well, if you don't know, look at the exponents. Which one has a larger exponent? The speed of light. So I'm going to write that one on top. So it would be 3 times 10 to the 8th over 3.73 times 10 squared. Do it just like we did number three, since it's now dividing using scientific notation. Break it into two parts, three over 3.73 and 10 to the eighth over 10 squared. Okay, divide three by 3.73, which is 0.8 O four times now we have ten to the eighth over two or over ten squared. So I do ten to the eighth minus two. Eight minus two equals six. So it'd be ten to the sixth. But there's an issue with this problem. It is not actually written in scientific notation because this number is not between one and ten. So I'm going to have to move the decimal one time. So it would be 8.04 times 10 to the negative first. And I know it's a negative first because the number was smaller than what I ended up with. Times 10 to the sixth. If I have negative 1 and 6, Remember, you have to do negative 1 plus 6. 10 to the negative 1 plus 6 would equal, if I owe you a dollar and I give you 6, I gave you 5 extra. So it would be 8.04 times 10 to the 5th. Okay, two more problems. All right, solve. So if I wanted to solve these two, Notice I have multiple things with x, so I always go and circle everything with x. And I'm going to make it very obvious where the equal sign is. So these two are on the same side. This one is on the opposite. So I'm going to combine those first. So I'm going to say 8x plus 2x. I'm going to still keep the negative 6. 8x plus 2, if I have 8 here and 2 more here, that would be 10x minus 6. Bring down the equals. Bring down 13 minus 4x plus 23. Okay, circle the variables again. Notice they're on opposite sides, so I need to do the opposite to one of them. I like moving the smaller, so I'm going to add 4x and add 4x. So that would be 13 plus 23 equals 14x minus 6. 10 plus 4 is 14. That's where I got that from. Okay, I'm going to combine these two. 3 plus 3 is 6. 2 plus 1 is 3. Bring down the equals. 14x minus 6. Sorry, that almost looks like a exponent and it is not an exponent. Okay, 
still have some more work to do. Sub opposite of subtract 6, because we're trying to get this by itself, is add. Add. 6 plus 6 is 12. 3 plus 1 is 4. Bring down the equals. Bring down 14x. And of course, some of this could have been simplified by combining a little bit earlier, but um, it's just the same to just keep bringing it down. I just don't want to miss anything. So now divide by 14, divide by 14, 42 divided by 14 is 3 equals x. Or x equals 3. Okay, last problem. So we have two fractions. Don't let the two fractions freak you out. Um, you always want to get rid of... Um, this one could easily be converted into 0.5 if you wanted. Um, and then we could get rid of this one. But watch what happens when I try to get rid of the fraction with the larger denominator. So I'm going to try to get rid of that 1 sixth. So of course we multiply by the denominator. So it would be 6 times 1 sixth. Remember this is all one term. There's no um, addition sign between all of this stuff. It's 1 sixth times all of that. So I actually only multiply the 6 into this part once. Equals, and then I have to do 6 times 1 half and 6 times x, because notice there is an addition sign between there. There's an addition sign here, but it's inside of the parentheses, so all of that actually has to stay together. So I'm going to do 6 times 1 half plus 6 times x. Okay, 6 and 6 cancel, that's what we wanted. So it would actually be 1 times 6x plus 3 equals... Now, if I have 6 times 1 half, or 1 half of 6 is 3, or 2 goes into 6 3 times. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 3 times, so it'd be 3. So notice that fraction ended up going away because we got rid of this fraction, because 2 actually goes into 6, plus 6x. We don't have to really distribute, but you could if you wanted to. 6x plus 3 equals 3 plus 6x. Circle the variables. Notice they're on opposite sides. So subtract 6x, subtract 6x. 6x minus 6x cancels. 6x minus 6x also cancels. So we're left with 3 equals 3. Does 3 equal 3? Yes. So that is infinite solutions. If it was 3 equals 12, then it would be no solution.